Vehicle check in and out shouldn't be hard work for anyone. That's why we built Checkwig. It's intelligent self-service technology that lets your customers check in and out. How, when and where they want. At home, in the dealership, securely outdoor or anywhere that works for them. Your customers are free to get on with their day. Your after sales team are free to get on with the work that really matters. And because it syncs seamlessly with most dealer management systems and automatically prompts customers to buy add-ons and answer questions, it takes the hard work out of integration and upselling too. Happier team. Happier customers. It's after sales check in and out as it should be. Check quick. Well, good afternoon, everybody, and uh, welcome to this uh, seminar where we're going to talk about the power of self service for after sales profitability. And I'm delighted to be joined by our customers from the Integrate Group, Andrew Moss and Andrew Middleton. Um, we'll go through a session. The guys will talk about uh, their experiences. And at the end, we'll have a Q&A. So please, if you do have any questions, there will be time at the end for you to uh, ask those. In terms of an agenda, um, we're just going to talk a little bit about why Checkwick exists, how we came about and some of the challenges that you are seeing in terms of consumer behaviour. We'll then move on into detail with the guys from Inchcape explaining about why they chose us as a supplier, why they're using self-service and the benefits they've seen in their business. And then, as I said, we'll have a Q&A. So Checkwick started in 2015 in Denmark and our founders worked for the Volkswagen Group distributor. And what they saw was increasing pressure at the beginning and the end of the day. Service advisors unable to see customers, customers getting frustrated, and so a poor customer experience. And what they did was they said, OK, how can we create a self-service environment for those customers that can deliver a better customer experience, and as you saw in the video, reduce the stresses and strains on the service advisors, but also deliver a greater level of profitability to our dealers. Those consumer behaviours continue. And recently we conducted some customer research to see actually, is it still relevant? And is self-service something that the customers demand? And what we found was that yes, consumers want convenience, they want choice, and they want speed. And you can see there that 67% of customers admitted they needed to queue. 20% of those said that after sales queues made them consider taking their business elsewhere. And I'm sure any dealer in this room would not like that to be the circumstance for them. 18% said that waiting made them less satisfied with the dealer's standards of customer service. And 38% want to drop off and collect keys outside of the normal after-sales operating hours. So it reaffirmed our position and our desire to provide self-service to our customers in the automotive sector. If you look at some of the statistics, and these are UK-only statistics, so far this year, we've delivered over 1.1 million self-service interactions. That has meant that over 56% of customers who were offered the opportunity to check in from home accepted that, and 31% of those customers went on to actually sell check-in at the dealership. So it does demonstrate the demand is there from the customers. That saves time for the service advisors, which means that they can spend more time dealing with those customers who want or need a personal service experience. Because our software can be set up by the dealer to ask about added value items or questions, so far this year, we've seen 92,000 customers respond positively to added value items. And that's generated over three million pounds worth of added value sales to those dealers. In addition, we can ask questions. 
So we've had 65,000 responses to service plans indicating that customers are willing to engage but also are looking for retention products which the dealers may offer them. In addition to that, we can also drive leads into the sales department through vehicle valuation requests. And you can see we've done 54,000 of those. So those UK numbers really, really speak for themselves. But it's less about Chequick and it's more about our colleagues in Inchcape. We started working with Inchcape in 2021 with a pilot in the Volkswagen business. We then rolled out across the Volkswagen division and shortly we're going to be rolling out across the rest of the brands in 2023. So I'd like to thank the Andrews for their support, but before we dive into the detail, let's just establish their views on self-service as a concept. So Andrew, can I ask you, why is offering a digital self-service option important for Inchcape Group and your customers? Um, I'll give you a bit of background on it, Nick. We started an after-sales transformation project about two or three years ago. And we looked at the complete after sales journey from start to finish, from booking uh, right through to collection. Uh, and as part of that journey, we um, interviewed loads of customers. We took feedback from our CSI and feedback questionnaires. We surveyed all our staff and it gave us top five priorities. And one of those priorities was the check-in. It was a real pain point for our staff, but there was also feedback from customers saying, we don't want to be treated all the same. We don't want to stand in a queue. We don't want to be waited to be served. So an obvious solution was the self-serve check-in. So we uh, obviously piloted it in Volkswagen for a start off because it's one thing saying it's a great concept and it's a great customer demand. It's actually proven it. And our pilot showed there was a big customer demand for it. And it actually freed up a load of our service advisors time to do proper interactions with customers and other added value jobs. Um, and that's why we sort of rolled it out across uh, the rest of Volkswagen. The other interesting point was we've, everybody in the industry has tried fixed time appointments, dedicated drop-off times, hot desks, waiting appointments. The fact of the matter is 80% of customers want to drop it off before they go to work. So you're always going to get that peak, peak time first thing in the morning. That adds the customer waiting time, it adds the stress to the service advisors. In addition to that, that's making it worse, you know, service times, repair times, ever diminishing. Um, in the last 10 years, we've had to see approximately 30% more customers just to stand still. And that's going to grow and grow and grow. And if you look at the stats of 80% more, we're just going to put more pressure on the front line and service advisors. So it was, the Checkbit seems a, a great way of doing it. Brilliant, it integrates to all our DMSs. So it's another, not a standalone system. And it gives the added benefit, it helps our service advisors uh, manage customers through the peak periods of the day. Benefits are, as well, it's easy and convenient. Um, it's open 24-7. We can extend the working day to the showroom opening hours. Added benefit, it's a consistent process across all dealerships. Um, and we can upsell up additional items. Brilliant. And it never takes a day off sick and never has holidays as well. So. <laughs> Very true about that. In support of this, you've created some great marketing material. So we're just going to take a minute and actually look at a short video which Inchcape have produced in-house. At Inchcape Volkswagen, we understand that we can provide a better experience for you as a customer by giving you more flexibility when servicing your vehicle. That's why we're excited to introduce our new self-service check-in kiosks at select Inchcape Volkswagen locations. These innovative kiosks are designed to make your experience at our service centers as easy and convenient as possible. Providing a fully digital online check-in and key drop-off service with no time fixed drop-off appointment required. With the self-service check-in kiosk, you can take control of your service visit and complete many of the tasks that would typically require a visit to a service advisor. From checking in for your appointment to requesting additional items such as fluid top-ups, the self-service check-in kiosk allows you to do it all on your own time, without having to wait for assistance. You can check in online from the comfort of your own home and simply drop your key off in the self-service check-in kiosk located in the showroom prior to your booking time. 
even the night before to avoid a morning rush. The process is safe and secure and requires a unique PIN in order to collect your keys and vehicle during the checkout stage. Our self-service check-in kiosk desks are just one of the many ways that we are striving to provide the best customer service possible. Visit your nearest Inchcape Volkswagen location today to find out more. I think that's a, a great video and it does showcase exactly why you're doing this, which is to provide the customer choice. One of the things that was mentioned within that is that the journey can start from home. So the customers can interact with the solution at a time and a place that suits them. If they do go on to actually use the key drop, which you saw in the video, it makes it a really quick, simple and easy process. But there's consistency because if they check in from home, they can key drop. If they haven't checked in from home, then of course they can do the full check-in at the dealership. And you'll see added value items and questions that are in there. One of the real benefits that you guys have seen is around that home check-in. So Inchcape consistently see over 50% of their customers choosing the home check-in option. But as you can see from that chart there, it didn't start at that level. So Andrew, you took some actions to actually develop that. So could you just give us some insight into how you delivered that? Yes, uh, absolutely. So for context, these are all uh, data figures from the Volkswagen division. And um, as uh, Andrew and Nick were saying earlier around, this was about giving customers the opportunity to do things their way in terms of uh, digital check-in and face-to-face -face check-in. So recognizing those options, we've had to increase the signposting of online check-in first. And actually, as you'll see as we go later in the slides, there are more benefits from home check-in for a customer than just the obvious um, uh, as obvious as it sounds, in that home check-in is obviously usually done a night before the, the, the day of the booking, and customers will often be at home, probably in an evening watching TV with time on the hands, and, and with that in mind, the, the slide that you saw previously with the um, pre-sell items on, it gives them a deal of time to be able to sift through those items and select if any of those are of interest to them as well. And of course then, when it comes to the dealership interaction, they've already completed that part of the journey and it's simply just a case of dropping off the keys. So with that in mind, we've had to increase signposting from pre-call and uh, even, even talking about this process at the point of booking at the dealership as well. So as you watch the timeline, as the, as the dates and the volume of uh, check-ins goes up, that, that's uh, staged in the sense that from sort of March, April time onwards, we did our full divisional rollout following the two site pilots. So you'll see a big spike up there from the point of view of the number of transactions that we've done because of the volume of sites that we've installed to check back in. But in addition to that, we've, we've changed our customer journey process from the point of booking to the pre-call stage. So customers have got better signposting and understanding the benefits of checking online. And there's quite a big jump in July. Did you do something differently in July? So yes, so it's, an, it's been an evolving system since uh, its conception and launch through to us then tracking the results after the first three months. And as I mentioned before, part of the journey process when we launched Chetvik was that the customers would receive a text message with their online check-in link. They could directly click on that link and then go through that process journey. And, we, and that stage happens 24 hours before the date of the booking. So around the middle part of the year, we added a second stage signpost with an email 48 hours before the booking too. That obviously widened the pool of opportunities of leads going to customers. It widened the ability for customers to check in through email as well as text message. And then that's, what was, that's what's driven part of the increase uh, at that time point of the year. Excellent. And as we said, customers who check in from home can then go on and check in at the dealership, either key dropping or performing the full check-in process. And actually, if you look at the numbers there, you've again got that sort of low start and then moving up. So, and some of that goes against the customer behaviours which we identified earlier, but do you've got any insight as to why it started at such a low base and what actual actions you've taken to increase the rate of engagement? So at the point that we launched, we were very keen to make sure that this was a, a, a cultural change in the dealership check-in process for customers. So as well as installing the physical hardware and having the software integration, we, we created a launch pack which we rolled out across all customer-facing staff in the showrooms. So for example, sales managers, 
uh, host reception, service advisors, where we're all able to understand the technology, the hardware, and with it being so straightforward, anybody can then guide a customer through that journey. So as we've then evolved in, in the launch of those uh, new sites onboarding at the start of uh, quarter two, we've then seen the, the gradual increase of those kiosk check-ins through the signposting, and, and, and critically then having um, members of staff with the kiosks available on hand to help customers check in. Feedback from customers from the start has been they're very happy and trust, trusting of the equipment, but they need somebody on hand if they're unsure how to navigate it through the first time. And the customer feedback after that first journey interaction, because they've then seen how simple the process is, actually the second time they've come back to use it, they probably don't need that uh, supervision. But, but at the first stage, we definitely need somebody on hand. So for example, key part of the day, eight o'clock in the morning, the first hour rush, we'll always have members of staff dedicated to the self-serve check-in kiosks to support those customers through. And then just going back a step onto the home check-in, once those customers have home checked in, that process journey of the pre-sale items and understanding the confirmation of the booking details has all been taken care of. So actually the, the simple key drop process is literally a 30 second routine. Okay, looking at the numbers there, we're around about the 50% mark now. Do you think there's an optimum number of self-service transactions? Um, and is there any variation in that? So there will be um, variations based on brand dynamics and even demographics of customers, ge geographical locations of customers as well. And we've got dealerships Northwest, Midlands and Southwest, all with the same technology within there. Of course, there's a span of performance and we're averaging around about 50%. But the, I think for me, the optimum number in, in sort of sweet spot terms is probably around 60, 65%. Two out of three customers as a broad um, uh, view is, is as good as it's getting or as good as we've seen in the businesses. Okay, and you mentioned in there about the need to host some of those, but you've also done some really nice things in terms of the uh, um, view for the customer. There we go, it's finally worked. So um, we like to call that nudging, but why is nudging important? Of course, um, if you install this technology and leave it to self-serve itself, customers will still naturally gravitate towards the nearest uh, person that they see in the dealership. That will usually be the receptionist, of course, and they'll then direct them to the service desk if they're an after-sales transaction. So the nudging and the signposting in point-of-sale terms, having um, uh, members of staff placed with the kiosks is really important to get customers to understand that this is a new digital option that's available for customers. And of course, we've been able to talk about the benefits of being contactless, digital free, etc. You don't necessarily need to have any human interaction from start to finish with these kiosks, and it just supports that opportunity of customers doing it their way. But ultimately, if they are left to just run themselves, customers will naturally gravitate towards what, what their habits have always been historically. Cool, so it's about customer satisfaction, but obviously there needs to be some form of return on investment for your business. And as we saw in the overall stats, we've sold over three million pounds worth of added value sales in there. And you've had some really good successes in that as well. Um, if you look at that, obviously there's been an increase as you've added more sites in there, and you're now operating around an average of 1,832 pounds per month per site, which is great. But let's actually look at the breakdown of those sales. And we can see lots of different options there. So the highest volume um, item is a key battery, which is a relatively low cost. So why did you select that item and how do you manage those items on an ongoing basis? So we've deliberately, um, we've deliberately positioned items that you wouldn't ordinarily find on an EVHC. So, for example, air conditioning treatments, key fob batteries. Some of these items are quite low tickets in terms of value. We've got accessories on there like dash cams and things like that too. But of course, with key fob batteries, um, the consequences of a battery going dead and, and the customer not being able to access their car, the, the, the fact that you're unable to identify that with an EVHC, there's a great opportunity there for us to be able to sell something that's relatively low cost as a ticket item, but everybody's going to need it at some point with their car. And you can see there that it's super popular in terms of customer uptake as well. It's not just about the high ticket items, it's about doing what's best for the customer. And one of the items that you mentioned there was aircon. 
Is Aircon just a summer item or is it all year round? It's all year round. Uh, of course, we have to uh, market it in a slightly different way between the winter months and the summer months. So within the screens themselves, we have different um, literature and logos and um, graphics that talk about things like the, um, the condensation aspects in the winter months, the antibacterial aspects from a health point of view, and of course, the summer cooling in the summer months too. And again, when we look at our divisional results across the northwest and the southwest, that the aircon um, category is a really good example of where we see spikes of popularity in some parts of the country versus others as well. So do you manage those items on an ongoing basis, or do you just have a suite of items that you sell regardless of where the location is? So we, we, keep this, we keep a consistent approach across all of the businesses in terms of the number of items that the kiosks or the home check-in will allow the customer to see. We try and limit it to around half a dozen per centre. And of course, the more items that you put on there, the, the greater the risk of customers overlooking those items because there's too much for them to choose from. So we, we try to keep it um, concise enough for it to be a quick journey, but relevant enough for customers to know the benefits. Excellent, because one of the other things that we have in the, the Checkwick solution is the ability to actually ask questions of the customers and picking up on your point about not wanting them to have to go through a, a long process of checking in, you've got those um, questions available for customers. So what's your main driver around those questions? So this gives us a, a much better insight into customer behavior and uh, their demand for other products and services. When we launched Chetvik from, from the start, we've always had in there about questions on interest in service plan requests as loyalty drivers. And as Andrew mentioned earlier on, the, the ability and the time save that the kiosk gives us enables the service advisors to deliver a better customer experience in terms of adding value and adding time spent with customers where necessary. So using the service plan scenario, it gives us the opportunity to talk to customers that may not have bought service plans from us in the past or have them uh, with us at the moment. And we get that insight directly as soon as they select whether or not they're interested to. And then later in the year, we've also added things like uh, part exchange valuations to help colleagues in sales understand the potential um, uh, sales from service opportunities. And then very recently in quarter three, we've then added in uh, the opportunity for customers who perhaps of uh, dropping their cars off at the beginning of the day, wanting to collect in the evening, go to work and, and unable to be contacted throughout the day to pre-authorise an upsell value through the kiosks as well. Cool. So you've talked a little bit about the, the check-in process, but of course there's also a check-out opportunity as we saw in, in that video. But based on your experiences, the, the numbers and the volumes are much lower than, than the check-in. What, what do you put that down to? There's a combina combination of different reasons, I think, for this particular uh, statistic. And some of the main drivers here are the customers and their behavior. Whilst we've been able to signpost check-in relatively easily, and it's quite self-explanatory on the, on the benefits of time save and things like that, when customers are coming to the end of their transaction with us, when it's you know, time to pay the bill, come to, time to collect your car, and things like that, they're very keen on wanting to have that conversation and interaction with the service advisors, understand exactly what's been done on their vehicle on that transaction point, understand what the costs are involved. And from a service advisor point of view, it's, it's critical to them to want to have those conversations as well to make sure the customer is satisfied with the visit too. So the option of, and the flexibility of customers doing things their way still remains but we're seeing customer behavior still preferring to want that face-to-face -face interaction at collection times. Of course, there are exceptions to that scenario. We've got multiple sites that close at lunchtime on a Saturday, for example, and customers have dropped the keys off on a Saturday morning, gone out shopping for the day, and then we can use the kiosk for a self-surf collection at a time that's suitable for them uh, as well. But in the main, customer behavior is still demanding face-to-face -face transactions on collection. It's interesting. When I was a service advisor, I definitely have used the checkout process because I wanted to go home on a Saturday lunchtime to watch the football or play football in my youth. So, but they, they're not really using this enough. Is it something you will consider driving customers towards or is it always going to be that option for the customer and about customer choice? I think the answer is probably both. You know, if, um, if it's not encouraged to use, then it won't get used at all. And as the behavior and evolution changes, I'm sure the increase, we're already seeing it as we've moved into quarter four, these percentages are starting to increase into double figures. They're still relatively low versus checking percentages, of course, 
but, but we are seeing natural growth there as well. And some of the smaller uh, job bases, so things like simple software updates, which are particularly common these days on the more modern vehicles, it's those types of small jobs where there's no cost to pay, where we're, where we're really seeing the, uh, the benefits of customers saying, don't worry, we can, I can collect the keys out of the kiosk because they know exactly what's gone on with the car and it's a very straightforward um, repair. It's really useful insight into how you're approaching this and what you actually want to do. One of the things we've been talking about all the way through this is about the customer and the customer experience. So has there been an impact on customer satisfaction and can you put that down to offering the self-service? Has it been positive? Has it been negative? What's your experience of that? So from the, from the outset, I think one of the very first uh, statistics that people were asking was, what's it doing for customer satisfaction scores? And for us within, within our division, before we installed Chetvik, we'd, we were delivering commanding customer satisfaction levels anyway. So we weren't necessarily installing this technology with a mindset that this was going to increase satisfaction. And when we did some uh, insights onto the customers that had used the kiosks versus those customers that hadn't used the kiosks, the scores actually were very similar in terms of the customers that hadn't used the kiosk were just as satisfied as those that did. That being said, what, what, what did happen that we were pleased about was that there was no risk to our score. We did expect to potentially to be a decline in the score, so we're really pleased that that hasn't happened and the score hasn't gone down and we've maintained that high level that we started off with. So, it's, um, it's a mixed bag of answers, but just going back to the original question that you asked me earlier about what's the optimal amount of throughput, what we have seen is where sites have forced customers, more than encouragement terms, to use the kiosks. We have seen feedback that's been negative because they didn't want to necessarily use that technology. So, so our, our, our sort of uh, sweet spot, if you like, is really centered around encouragement and signposting and trying to change that behavior very gradually with customers and ultimately give them the opportunity to do the things that they want, to, the way that they want to do them. Thank, thank you. And the final question from me, and then we'll hand over to the audience to ask more questions is, you know, what advice would you give an individual dealership or, or a group who were considering self-service as an option? What's your advice that you would give them? I think for, from our side, you've got to look at it is, our customers were demanding it and wanting it. That's a big tick in the box you should have a look at that. And our service advisors, were, if you said now to our service, service advisors, let's take it out tomorrow, they'd be uproar. So I think that's, once your staff think it's great and customers think it's great, it's, it's why wouldn't you? And again, it gives you that flexibility. Customers want choice. Probably and also in the future with future proofing, because the younger generation, they're bought up with digital and self-serve and all this. Um, it's just future proofing yourself for, future years, so I, I would say go ahead and do it. Excellent. Andrew, anything to add to that? Yes, yeah, so I think from my, from my point of view, anybody that's considering launching the, um, the, the kiosks and the technology, in order to really get it to land successfully, you've got to get that buy-in from the full, the full team. And, and so we're not just talking after sales here, we're talking host, reception, sales team, anybody that's interacting with a customer within the showroom. And, and if you can get that positioning to land with everybody to understand the benefits of what it will do for the wider business, then you've got a great chance of making it work. Excellent. Well, thank you very much for that. Um, I'm now going to throw it open to the floor. So um, has anybody got any burning questions that they would like to ask either myself or my colleagues from Inchcape? Sorry, there's a microphone coming. Hi. Hi, Mark Harris from Reddit UK. Um, so with the solution we've seen is an indoor solution. Do you see a demand for a true 24-7 outdoor solution? And if so, what would the challenges around that be? Okay. So I, if I answer from a Chequick perspective, um, and you can go and see it on our stand, we've just launched our, our new outdoor hardware, and that is available, and it's, it's in operation across the European markets. We don't actually have a pilot in the UK at the moment, and perhaps the guys can answer that for you from a UK perspective, because it's successful in Europe, less adoption in the UK so far. Yeah, I mean, we, we've looked at it. One of our biggest challenges is insurance. Um, our dealerships, you'd have to leave barriers down, you, you use car pitch, your showroom's open to 24 seven to customers then. So there's a lot more thinking and strategy you've got to go into it, and clearly, you need insurance. And if the insurers won't insure you, it's not an option at this moment in time. But I'm sure it will come. 
I'm sure it will come. And I should add at that point, Mark, that all of our um, hardware is certified to an EN 1143 certification level, which is what is safes that banks use are to. So the insurance element is not actually about the, the, the necessarily the key security, it's, it's about the car security. Yeah. And a, a lot of dealerships, when we ask them about that, haven't really thought about those insurance implications. So any other questions? <laughs> it was just a question on, uh, you said you can check out your own vehicle after the service. Is there the possibility to check out a courtesy car, or do you have to go to a service advisor if you have a courtesy car? Two, two things on that. One is that you can manually check out um, a, a courtesy vehicle using our software. But most of the um, companies, Inkscape included, use a, a, another piece of software to manage their courtesy car provision. So we are working with a number of those suppliers to integrate that in. So we have in uh, Denmark, which is our home market, we're integrated with Rentlog, um, which is the, uh, their courtesy car system. But in the UK, we're working with all the suppliers, and that will become available in there. Again, it goes back to the dealer's own processes, because to self-check out, you've got to be reassured about the condition of the vehicle when you give it to the customer and when you return that. And there are also insurance restrictions about, OK, well, is the person who's collecting the vehicle the person who's driving license you've verified? So yes, we have the capability to do it now manually. In the future, we'll have the capability to do it using uh, integrations in other pieces of software. But it's really down to the, to the dealership as to whether they want to do that. So throwing it over to you guys, you know, is that something that you would look at? Yeah, I think. Um in the future, as we go more to a paperless society, everything will become more integrated. Uh, and that's certainly one thing we, we need to do is, is get better. And that will drive digital integration and self-serve more and more into the future. OK, cool. Any other questions anywhere? I've got one other question for you then, guys. I think we still have time. But it's, it's you know, we talked about Volkswagen. We talked about the other brands. What has been the view of the brands towards this? From a group view, uh, the, brand, the other brands are going, when can we have it? <laughs> Why are we last? <laughs> but we've, we've obviously done it in a strategic rollout, brand by brand, to get the buy-in. So um, yeah, all the brands are, are, are well pleased with putting it in, to be fair. OK, excellent. So uh, any other questions anywhere? We obviously did such a great job that they, nobody got any questions to ask us. <laughs> but thank you very much for your attention. Um, Checkwick is available. You can go and see our hardware, both the indoor and the outdoor, and experience the solution yourselves. Thank you. Thank you.